Hey, Ethan. Yeah, what's up? Uh, you like Stalker? Yeah, I do, actually. What about Stalker Gamma? You know what? I like Stalker Gamma so much that I'm about to make a video essay on it. Stalker Gamma is a game I'm sure many of you have heard of, and you've probably also seen it on YouTube as well. Whether that is through Arian, Operator Drewski, No Moxie, or some other YouTuber I failed to mention, they all end up saying the same thing. Stalker Gamma is great. However, I would venture to say it's more than just great. It represents what communities can do and create when they come together to make their favorite games better. Stalker Anomaly and the modular mod pack known as Stalker Gamma are complete overhauls of the Stalker series of games that bring a variety of elements to the game. It adds to the survival, scavenging, cooking, crafting, and progression of the game in a way that makes the game feel almost unique from the base game as a whole. My first experience with Stalker happened about 8 years ago, with the YouTuber Life of Boris' first video on the game Stalker Shadow of Chernobyl. By this point, I had already known about the events that occurred at the Chernobyl nuclear power complex and already had a deep interest on the topic. However, when I discovered Boris's video, I was shown a whole new perspective on the exclusion zone. I was shown a world that had been ravaged by radiation and had seen the very worst of what accidents could lead to. I was also shown a world where enemies could show up out of nowhere and kill you regardless of if you had the best armor or best AK you could find in the entire exclusion zone. The masterpiece known as Stalker Shadow of Chernobyl was released in 2007 and revolves around the exclusion zone around Chernobyl. The goal of the game is to kill another stalker who goes by the name Strelok. Later in the game, we are informed by a character known as Doc that we are in fact Strelok and many of the myths surrounding what's inside the sarcophagus are a lie. From here, we get to defeat the Brain Scorcher and make our way to the Chernobyl Complex. Once we arrive, we get the choice to choose one of many endings. The path that takes us to Reactor 4, which contains what's called the Wish Granter, a trap made by a group called the Sea Conscious to protect their secret activities in the zone that have created many of the anomalies that happen in the zone, only lead us to fake endings, with all of Strelok's wishes having a caveat that either kills Strelok or hurts him in some way. The path that takes us to the real endings takes us directly to the Sea Conscious, where we can do one of two things. Destroying the Sea Conscious is commonly seen as the good ending. This makes the skies clear up and provides a ray of hope for the exclusion zone. However, joining the Sea Conscious is seen as the bad ending, and this is because Strelok joins what is seen as the main villain of the game, and rightfully so. The mods for the Stalker series are on a huge spectrum ranging from the smallest quality of life updates, all the way to complete overhauls that change many of the game's major systems. These changes make the game feel different and unique in many ways. Stalker Anomaly, just one of these many mods, was made to be the most stable and customizable experience for the Stalker series and excels at being just that. It adds a new story, various modes, such as my two favorite game modes, Survival and Warfare. Survival is essentially what it says on the box, a standard survival game mode. It plays like a standard zombie survival game, and it's similar to DayZ in a lot of ways, except for the fact that it has factions that NPCs control. The Warfare game mode is also a really unique game mode. It's only recreated in games like Arma 3, Arma 2, and Arma Reforger. This gives Anomaly and Gamma a unique leg up on other mods and even some other games. Yes, there are games that do survival modes better, Yes, there are games that have better maps, and yes, there are games with better modding. However, none of those games are quite as unique as Stalker is, and those mods are not as game-changing as Anomaly and Gamma. A lot can be said about the effort that the developers of both Anomaly and Gamma put into their respective mods, and how much they truly care for the community, which is something that a lot of games that have modding communities can't quite replicate the way Stalker can. I was first introduced to Stalker Gamma by, you guessed it, Operator Jeruski. His video was much like Life of Boris's videos on Stalker, and that it introduced me to a whole new perspective to look at the zone. Though at the time, I was running an Acer laptop with an NVIDIA MX150, and I couldn't play the mod, but I still bought Stalker Call of Pripyat just so I could experience the base game before I could one day play Stalker Gamma. But when that day finally came, when I could finally play Stalker Gamma for the first time, it was more than I expected. While I had played Call of Perpia before, I never finished the first mission and really only fought a couple of mercenaries in Zaytan, and all I wanted to do there was get a better gun. And that's where my experience ended. 
Learning the game in Gamma was unforgiving, to say the least. I constantly died over and over, and even considered uninstalling the mods, and even the game. But I pushed through and managed to finish my first playthrough of Stalker Anomaly's story, even if it was on the easiest setting possible. After I finished the story, I started a new save, and I figured out the debug menu so I could cheat money and items into the game, which is where I recorded all of my footage for this video. Even though I don't typically cheat in games, unless it's Hearts of Iron 4 or Farming Simulator, playing Gamma with cheats on felt different from cheating in other games. Yes, I could stay alive forever. Yes, I could run forever. Yes, I had unlimited cash, and yes, I could get whatever I wanted. But I still felt that sense of fear of an enemy sitting right around a corner, waiting for me, while unknowingly walking into their trap. I never play horror games, because they aren't really that good anymore, and the ones that are scare the hell out of me. However, Stalker is a game that likes it to dress itself up as an action-adventure game, when in reality, it's actually a horror game. Cheating or not, these scares can be much better than any cheap jump scare in a AAA horror title. In most open-world games, such as Fallout, GTA V, Fallen Order, Jedi Survivor, and to some extent heavily modded Gmod, I find myself getting bored with the games and only put so many hours into the game after I either finish the story, get bored with the game, or mod the game beyond recognition and then drop it. But with games like Stalker, I find myself coming back even after I got bored. Now, this isn't something exclusive to Stalker. I mean, I still play Farming Simulator 22 most days, and I can't get bored with Cyberpunk 2077, but even still, Stalker keeps my attention in a way that most games don't. It keeps things interesting by providing a large world that can be explored, and I haven't even gotten to explore all of the many houses, cars, trucks, helicopters, halls, tunnels, and secret areas yet. It's an interesting take on the open world game, and... Even though the areas are divided by waypoints that teleport you to other areas, I still heavily enjoy the game. For me, Stalker Gamma provides something that I've been waiting for for a very, very long time. A tactical survival shooter with a good story, optional or not, that has ready or not level gunplay, Tarkov level customization, wear mechanics, and basic needs that you need to manage. Base game Stalker does this for me extremely well, but Anomaly takes this to a whole nother level. And with Gamma, well, the game feels like a different type of tactical. And with many of the gun mods for Gamma, I feel a freedom that most tactical shooters don't give. And that is the feeling of being able to add guns to the game relatively freely. Granted, your options are limited to what the community has made, that's not a problem. As the large community has made a ton of weapon mods that range from mods that let you use various melee weapons to mods that add machine guns that would be used in support roles during combat, all the way to mods that add anti-tank weapons so you can blow up your enemies in spectacular fashion. The gunplay, health, and stamina in Anomaly is on a whole nother level that is almost exactly what I wanted it to be, with leaning mechanics, a dedicated walking button for slow movement, a realistic stamina system, and a health system that feels a lot more real than games like Fallout, Call of Duty, and even Arma 3. The night vision looks the way it should in real life, and the wear and tear mechanic that is on them feels great. I'm sure Operator Drewski said it, but when you're going through a dark, abandoned building that you just know has enemies in it, and your nods go out, that sense of fear I talked about earlier spikes through the roof since you have zero clue what could be running towards you at that moment. On many levels, Stalker is a classic, and for many, it always will be. Stalker Anomaly, and by extension Stalker Gamma, add to that by providing an experience that not a lot of games provide these days. When I think of survival games that have guns in them, my mind goes straight to Stalker and Stalker Anomaly. These games, at least for me, have cemented themselves as classics in my mind, because they have kept me entertained in much the same way that Farming Simulator, Hearts of Iron, and Cyberpunk have. And it has been something for me and my friends to bond over in some ways. While Stalker is often overlooked by a large majority of people looking for a new shooter to play, the few that choose Stalker are greeted with a hidden gem that is beloved by its player base. Stalker has been a passion project of its devs who are based out of Ukraine, and because of the current war in Ukraine, their latest project, Stalker 2, Heart of Chernobyl, has been delayed, but even then, it's still projected to release in December of this year. 
On top of that, Anomaly has been a passion project of the devs that have delivered on its many promises that have made the game a lot better and have made the game into a whole new experience. This video took a really long time for me to make, and it's been a long, long time coming. I bet you're wondering where I've been, and to be honest with you, it's a ton simpler than it might seem. I just haven't had a good enough computer to do anything, really. And now that I'm rocking an RTX 3070 and an Intel i5-12600K, I can finally pick up where I left off, even if I unlisted most of my videos because, well, let's be honest here, they were cringe. I want to thank the devs of Stalker Anomaly for answering my questions on the game, which couldn't make it in the video because I worked too fast to get it in, but I will be posting them once I receive the answers. I also want to thank you for watching the video that even if it has been a two full years since my last video that I put effort into and wasn't edited on my phone. And um, yeah, so uh, also this part is unscripted. <laughs> I will be making more farming simulator videos in the future. Um, I've been trying to record something on Monath, Iowa uh, and some stuff on Midwest Horizon but it's just not been working out. So hopefully I can get something out there um, and I'm going to plan another big project like this. Uh, maybe on Farming Simulator, uh, but I don't see that really you know, hitting a chord with the video essay crowd. So I think my next project might be on Farming Simulator or Ready or Not. I'm leaning more towards Ready or Not though. Again, I want to thank you for watching the video and I'll see you guys later. Thank you.